The Book of Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmothers, Chapter 2. An account of the first grandmother, Emery, and her joining for the Lord, and also of the righteous establishing themselves in the land of Qatar and of my car establishing the continuations of the spiritual heritage of Eden to all mankind. And it came to pass that I once again sat before the urn, and I beheld that little Kenny was obstinate before his parents, when he was asked to help put the sheep away for the night, and he refused and stomped his feet. And I began to look with an earnest heart, for I knew the Lord was once again continuing to reveal to me the wonders of what he did to set apart accomplishing his task to prepare the world of his father for the long duration so the purposes of anarchist would be preserved upon the earth. And I saw Mykar, son of Yatikad, viewing his older brother Kenny in his continuing waywardness and rebellious behavior and of all her children, Mykar is the most like his mother Hava in her innocence and mildness of heart. And my car, too, cannot anticipate evil, and he is very dismayed and confused by the emotions of discord, insomuch that when he is exposed to it, he retreats away and busies himself with something to distract his tender heart. And he is called my car because of his innocence and mildness and righteousness, and more than any other of the children of Hava, he is the most tender-hearted and he desires to only surround himself with the feelings of Eden. And even though he has not been there, he knows full well what they are because he is joined fully in his spirit to his mother Hava. And because of this, he has inherited her gift of prophecy. And his brother Azan, whose name means to enlarge the ears with the hands, desires only to walk in his daily walk in the feelings of the spirit of childlikeness. And when he encounters discord, it seems to him that the flow of life is interrupted. And in this way, he clings to his older brother, Mykar, for he shelters him from discord, and they often retreat away together in their quietness of heart. And it can be seen that the greatest desire of Azan all of his life is for him in his heart to be always found to be living in such a way as to be intimately guided by the spirit of harmony, and he often can be heard by others conversing by himself with Moza the lamp while in the act of his daily labors. And I could see by Urm that speaking out loud to the Lord while in the presence of others was common in the people of that day. And Azan is very diligent to avoid anything that would distract or inhibit the tranquility of a close walk with the Lord. And for this reason, he is grateful for his companionship with Mykar and the two of them loved their parents with a profound affection. And it came to pass that I saw at the time of the death of Mataniah, Mykar is married and has many children, and he is depended upon by his family to guide them in every way towards the holiness such as we found in Eden. And he is a big man and gentle and much loved by his family. And I marveled to look upon him because both his parents were little. And the wife of my car is named Aruka, and she is the daughter of Hava, and she is little and very sweet and gracious and carries a pleasant countenance. And the name Aruka means the one who can restore happiness. I do not know how anyone could be around such a person and not be happy. And it came to pass that in those days, Yatsikat and Hava are found to be herding the sheep of their slain son, Mataniah. And I see them walking in the valley of Simca, where they first met. But now they have named it the valley of Yoash, for it has become the valley of their grief, as it is the valley where Mataniah was killed, and his bones lay upon the ground, for no one knew what to do with them. And the entire ravine was a place to be avoided by all, and everyone knows that their old parents are weighed down in their grief, and they are seen to be faithful to their duties in the care of his sheep in spite of it. And my car is in despair and is distraught over the mourning of his parents. And about the time when his parents were in their deepest grief, my car is also overcome and he has lain down upon his bed and refusing to get up or to eat. And Aruka found him on his bed, but he will not get up for her. And Aruka is alarmed 
and she must confer with others to find out what to do. And as it is her custom, when she is troubled, she seeks out her sister, Emery. And the name Emery means one who was prominent and who walks on mountains and finding her guidance from the Lord. And often Emery is viewed by her family as one who can seek the Lord and ask him direct questions and find guidance for them because she seems to be able to know the desires of Anakis. And she has learned to speak clearly and resolutely about what his desires are. And she is the first person to put language to the process of hearing the Holy Spirit. And all the people have come to depend on her in their time of need. And even though she is the youngest daughter of Haba at this time, she is very influential by way of her example to assist those around her to seek the spirit of the Lord for specific guidance in their daily walk. And she can witness effectively that Mozart the Lamb will answer the very questions of their hearts by the power of his Holy Spirit. And she has accounts of times when he has appeared to her and counseled her in the way. And with this vision of Emery, the Lord began to bring me understanding, for I saw that for most of the children of Yatsikat and Hava, there was in their minds the perception that they all had left Anakis behind in Eden. And Emery was very charitable and unassuming. And even though her parents did not have the language to explain to her how they were guided by the Holy Spirit, she could discern by her strong intuition what was happening to them when the Spirit was speaking to them. And she developed the language to tell others and from her the personal dynamic of being led by the Holy Spirit began to influence others. And from her, it spread abroad to all the ancient righteous peoples. And thus we see that through this innocent little sweetheart, Mozart the Lamb was able to do his work. And Emery is the first of the seven grandmothers Mozart used in his task. And she joined mankind to the Holy Spirit, Kahi. And it came to pass that I saw it was her custom to walk on the upper reaches of the northwestern slopes of Mount Mahuya above north when she wished to find out the desires of anarchist and it was made known to me that starting with this wondrous woman came the tradition that the governing guidance of the Lord is the mountain of the house of the Lord and this tradition has been supported by the prophets and upon hearing of the anxiety of Aruka for her husband Emery went up upon the side of the mountain, and she remained there for three days. And all the people were anxiously waiting for her to come back. And during that time, my car was lying on his bed in his distress, and those in the encampments were expectant of what news she would bring. And it came to pass in the evening of the third day, while many were gathered around a fire, Emery came quietly into their midst. And she embraced Aruka, and she sat down in the light of the fire. And after a while, she began to speak, and she said, The Lord Mozart the Lamb walked with me on the mountain, and he spoke tenderly to me there. And by his presence, a vision of comfort was opened up to me, and I beheld a wonderful mountain far to the west. And the mountain there spoke to me of tranquility and peace. And she recited the vision for them and they could all feel the truth of her words. And she said that the great mountain had a sparkling sea lying beside it, and across the sea was a beautiful, peaceful valley, and upon the southern mountain was a smaller sea. And she continued and said, As I looked at this wondrous sight, the Lord said to me that it was the desire of his heart that Micah take his family and travel into the setting sun, and if he does, he will find this mountain in sea and valley, and he will find new life there. And that in this way, Micah and his family will render a great service to Mozart the Lamb. And when he arrives, he is to seek out the body of pure water upon the upper reaches of this mountain. And he said the anarchist and the Erkota Shoi would be well pleased if he would kindle a fire there and offer up to anarchist the odors of sweetness out of the thankfulness of his heart for being led there by the kind hand of Mozart the Lamb. And the mountain there was eagerly awaiting them, for none of the children of Yasakot had spread themselves there, and the Lord said he would safeguard the tranquility of the place for many generations. And Emery said that in her vision she saw that the land there was bountiful and would bless them with abundance. 
And it came to pass that upon hearing all these things, Arica went and told Micah the news, and he was invigorated, and he arose and came himself to hear the account from Emory. And they spoke together all through the night, and Micah began to eat again. And in the course of a few days, Yatakad and Hava returned home, and they bore record that Moza the Lamb had appeared to them to comfort them, and all the feelings of their experience of the joys of Eden returned to them while he spoke to them, and the waters of Semka comforted them in their desires to return to Eden. And upon hearing this account of his parents, Micar felt his joy once again of the expectation of their returning to Eden some day, and he went up to the place near to where his parents first met, and he picked up a stone out of the waters of Semka, for he supposed in his heart that in his departing to go to the west, he would find upon his arrival his special conditions of Eden. And you will see that he was not to be disappointed in this expectation. And he told Aruka that he now had a rock of witness to take the feelings of Eden with them when they would depart westward. And this special witness would accompany them in all their travels. And the stone was a white stone and it was round and smooth and flat and about the size of the hand of a man. And Aruka made a special pouch to carry it in. And from that day forward, my car wore it at his side everywhere he went. And it came to pass that in those days, plans began to be made for their departure in the springtime after enough food was put by for the journey. And my car and Aruka and their children all made ready to travel according to the voice of the Lord, for the Spirit bore strong witness to the account of Emory. And it came to pass that I saw with Urim that Micah and Azan were inseparable. And Azan is very troubled at the prospect of the departure of Micah. And Azan is not yet recovered from the effects of the flight of so many of his brothers and sisters with their families. And he often sees the tear-stained faces of his parents as they think about their children having left. And now Micah and Arika are going away also. And he cannot discern what the Lord is saying to him in his heart. And after many quiet walks in prayer, he has determined that he will depart with Micah. And Azan began to put by provisions for his journey. And Moza the lamb gave him a dream. And in the dream, he saw that he needed to put by a double portion of provisions. And when he awoke, he wondered why. But he then began in earnest to provide for the journey. And as I look with Erm, I can see Emery weeping in the shadows of the firelight. And she is very distressed at the thought of the departure of Azan, and she is crying. For she loves her brother Azan very deeply, and in her heart she has determined to seek out her father. And she followed the signs of his travels upon the earth, and she found him sitting upon a rock in the rushing waters of Simca. And he is quietly singing a song of Eden. And when she found him, she rehearsed the matter of her despair to him. And she said, Father, as you know, the Lord has guided my car to depart into the western lands. And now Azan will go with him. And, oh, Father, I have come to you because if Azan leaves, I do not know how I can live. What is wrong with me? And upon hearing this, Yatakai smiled upon her and said, When you were born, we named you Emory because we knew that you would be one who would walk closely with Anarchist, and you would be able to ask him questions and hear his answers clearly. But we did not see whose rib you were. But I see now that you and Azan have the same purposes of Anarchist that are joined as to hearing, as you both walk through life with a special joining to the spirit of Kahi as your companion. Perhaps you are his rib. And Emory rose up in her delight and said, Father, I have known this, but I was afraid to speak of it, for I did not know such things of a certainty. Father, tell me again how when you and mother became married on the day that Anarchist worshipped with you. And Yatsakad rehearsed to her all that transpired at the rocks of Simca on the day that Anarchist married them. And the news was a great delight to Emory. And she sprang up upon her feet and stepped over to stand in the water and made joyous sounds before the Lord. And she declared that she would do likewise and become the wife of Azan. And old Yazikad smiled upon her and said, What about Azan? Does he know of this? And it came to pass that Yazikad accompanied her 
and they went back so she could speak with Azan, and the news of it was spread abroad, and many were filled with joy for them, and those who would depart were delighted that they all could go together. And now Azan knew why the spirit counseled him to put by double, and Hava looked upon all this as only a mother could, seeing more of her children departing away from Nod, but she found comfort knowing that the Lord was directing their paths in the way of righteousness for his own special need. And after those days, a wedding was planned. And it came to pass that when the day arrived for the wedding, all was in readiness. And it took place at the rocks of Nod, which stood by the lower pool. And I saw that Cathan was young, and he watched with keen interest at that which transpired at the wedding worship there. And his heart was filled with the spirit of anarchist, and he wept for joy. And he did this because his spirit was fully engaged with his vision of created purpose. And the name Kathan means to give in marriage. And he thereby could discern by the spirit the effect of the elements of righteousness that anarchists used in this worship had on the spirits of life, both with those being married and on the Urko de Shoy. And he discerned that it was by these elements that the man and his wife were introduced to the Urko de Shoy, and thereafter known to them to be living in the sanctity of marriage. And he could well comprehend that everything holy in creation respected that which Anarchist had joined that day. And in all creation, there was a great determination to support them and bring protection to those who live in the pure sanctity of marriage. And with this special young man, there was, for the first time, one who fully understood what it meant to bear witness to all the holy spirits of life in the earth and the true meaning of creation. For creation will become complete by the joining together in perfect holiness of a man and his rib in the sanctity of marriage. And I know that when those who walk in darkness pollute and corrupt the sanctity of marriage with lust, fornication, or violence, or make it be something other than one man and one woman, it pleases the enemy of all that is good. And it came to pass that after the wedding, Cathan went alone before the Lord, and he made a vow that he would see to it that all of his people for perpetual generations would always be found to be walking in the sanctity of marriage, and they would engage in no lust or fornication as Kenny and Awan had done, but would faithfully walk circumspectly in chastity and purity of heart in the time preceding their marriage, and that afterwards they would diligently maintain that holy state for the rest of their lives. And I could see clearly the starting point for the degradation of women in society began with fornication, and among the wicked it grew in the horror of it until women became simply something to own. And I remembered that Kenne was filled with lust, and that was the principal power Mozor the Decadent had over him. And he wanted his wife of his brother Mataniah, who was named Sephi. And Mozor the Decadent had whispered in his ear that it would empower him in the desire of his heart for him to have twin wives who were Sephi and Azura. And Awan was in like manner deceived by the powers of evil to become wayward from that which Anarchist had established with the sanctity of marriage in Eden. And it came to pass that Cathan spoke to Anarchist and asked him to help him to always see to it that their marriages would commence with the same worship of marriage that was established by the very hand of Anarchist in the perfection of Eden. And he knew that Nashem, his sister, had been seen at her birth to be his rib. And he patiently waited for her decision in the matter and the name Nashem means simply a woman who is the wife of a man. And I saw her to be the perfect model of a wife in the sight of Anarchist. And she is both selfless and assertive in her womanhood. And it came to pass that Cathan inquired diligently of his parents concerning all the matters of the marriage worship. And he wanted to know all the particulars thereof. And he found that Azan and Emery had neglected to give each other espousal gifts. And he discovered that his parents had forgotten the wedding song. And it was lost to them all because Yazikad and Hama did not know it was a part of that which Anarchist was doing. Because the singing of it sprang out of their hearts so naturally 
but it was restored again by Enoch when the Lord taught him how to divide the sons of men and Cathan considered that it was a part of that which Anarchist was doing when he established that a woman was not to sit on a bed or bedding with any man until the day of her wedding. And this must be observed by all girls from their early childhood, and it was established by Anarchist in Eden. And it came to pass that in the springtime, when all was prepared and ready, Mikar and Azan and their families departed westward, and Yasekad found Hava high up upon the cliffs of Nod, watching them depart until they were out of sight, and she wept. And he sat with her and held her and tried to comfort her by telling her that it was for a wise purpose in the Lord that they were departing. And I must say, as I looked upon them with Urim, that I saw the mother of all the living, and she was an elegant lady, and she bore children for a period to exceed seventy years. Oh, how Anakis loves her! and has tenderly upheld her and Yasekad through all their trials. And as I watched with them those who were departing, I knew that the Lord had moved them with his spirit to perform a vital function for him in the task that lay before them. And he brought comfort to our first parents in their mourning, how rich will be their reward. And it is known that the first parents of a people bequeath the nature of the virtues of their personalities, to their offspring for many generations and often it can be seen that their personal traits can endure among their people for the entire pathway of the earth thus it can be supposed that the people leaving west toward the setting sun would take with them the traits of personality that would be long embedded into the regions where they arrived and our old parents watched them until it was too dark to see and they made their way back to their encampment, and Hava supposed she may never see nor hear from them again. And this had happened to them before, when their children fled out of fear, and they offered prayers up to Moza in their behalf for a blessing upon them. And it came to pass that the company traveled gently, and they passed through lands that had never been seen before by any man, and they persisted in their travels every day, and they did not encounter any other person, and nothing threatened them. And they could see Mount Mahuya diminishing away from them in the distance as they looked back. Now after some time, they began to view a wonderful mountain which lay before them. And by the fall time, they came to a great sparkling sea, and they looked down upon it for the east side. And it gleamed in the setting sun, and they named it the Shaman Sea because it sparkled in the sun. And it came to pass that they tarried there and put provision by and made dwellings for themselves to allow them to stay through the winter. And when they spied out the land across the sea, they found a large and spacious valley. And they sent young men over there to see what could be known about the place. And upon their report, when they returned, they determined to go there in the spring. For the young men said, there was a marvelous river of water in the valley that ran a course into the sea, and all the people were well pleased with the news, and they named the river in their new home, the Pishon River, because they were dispersed out of Molodeth to find it by the kind hand of Anarchist. And it came to pass that the people of Mykar and Azan came to encamp along the river, and they hunted and caught fish. And Mykar was intent to find the waters of purity, upon the higher reaches of the mountain that Emery had seen in her vision. And Mykar ascended up upon the south mountain from the valley, and there he found the high mountain sea. Now when he had kindled a fire, he put it upon a large flat stone, and he offered up sweet odors to Anarchist for guiding them in the way. And then he ascended upon the summit of the great mountain, and he named the mountain Mount Qatar for it offered them a place of safety and refuge from mourning, and it was the guardian of their new home. And when he had rested a while, he took the stone he had brought, which had come from the land of his parents in Eden, and he found one just like it on Mount Qatar, and he laid them side by side upon an altar, and he introduced the mountains to each other, and he instructed them in all their behavior towards one another, and in all they would do in relation to the righteous, and he instructed Mount Qatar that it was to follow the example of Mount Mahuya, 
and the duty of it in protecting the people who came there from the land of Molodeth. And Mount Qatar and Mount Mohoya had watched each other since Olam, and now they were friends together, and both had contributed a white stone as the element of righteousness to declare that the feelings of Eden would be shared by them both in behalf of a righteous people. And Micah knew it not, but the meaning of the white stones is that he was declared by Anakis to be worthy to perform this task for him. And this is the spirit that gives such stones life. And he dedicated Qatar and all the regions round about to be a place where the spirit of Eden would shine forth in all its knowledge and purity to all the inhabitants of the earth until the end thereof. And he did this by a sure hand, using the element of righteousness of the stones. For you will see that it will take millennia of time to weaken that spirit, but it will never leave altogether. By this shall mankind be blessed by the Urkota Shoy, if they will honor Anarchist, and the sparkling sea bore witness. And the righteousness of the man Mykar has established a sure foundation for Shabua to arise up within creation, proceeding forth from the regions of Qatar, because now all the Erekot Shoy by this act of introduction learn to expect that righteous man would instruct them in the way. And it was a spiritual heritage that carried on to the son of Noah and from him to all righteous mankind. And my heart was filled with satisfaction to learn this truth. And I felt a joining in my soul to these, my ancient people, and these two majestic mountains have conferred together many times concerning Shabua. And from where Micah stood at his altar, Mount Mohuya could be seen in the misty distance eastward. And I beheld that this was the very place I viewed when I first looked with Aram, and in this I was back to where I began, and the Lord had answered my questions. And it came to pass that the encampments of the people along the river prospered, and the gift of life from Anakis to mankind was a delight for him when he gazed upon his children, and the people established themselves and began to fill the valley, and they had no sheep but they had a seed in abundance. And in those days, my car was lonesome for his parents when he heard reports concerning the high places to the east, and he would take his journey to the high places above the Shaman Sea, for he was one who was raised on the high shoulders of Mahuya, and the low plain of the valley seemed to him to be too closed in. And it came to pass that he discovered a place in the high hills where he thought he might be able to see the silhouette of Mahuya against the rising sun. And in his heart he rejoiced to behold the gate of Eden, and his happiness was made full. And Arukah rejoiced in the stored happiness of her husband, and she immediately began to settle in to establish themselves there upon the high places. But Azan and Emery dwelt in the valley by the river, and when she wanted to walk up upon a high place, she had only to look about at the mountains surrounding the valley and go there as she found need, albeit it was several days' journey for her. But she was a traveler, and the people were delighted to ever walk in the spirit in the pleasantness of the land. And after those days, about 85 years passed in peace in Qatar. But during the fourth generation since Eden, the offspring of Kenny and many of the people of Towa who knew not the Lord Moza the Lamb began to sally forth to inhabit the lower reaches of the eastern side of the Shaman Sea. And they were a hard people, who knew not the kind ways of Anarchist. And they dwelt with a high level of commotion and contention among themselves. And I could see that illness began to be introduced to the family of mankind, and there was anger, despondency, and laziness. And the people wore cotton garments, and they took great pride in their appearance and status among themselves. And their women began to try to beautify themselves. And the role of women among the wicked continued to spiral downward. And should any of the wicked come into the regions of Qatar, the righteous would fade quietly away into the hills and distant places to not be discovered. And the wicked greatly feared them by reason of their many superstitions 
and because of the view that they were a wild and backward and primitive people, and the people of Tawa did not dare to seek them out, and soon the entire valley was forbidden to them by reason of their fears. And so the fear the wicked had of the regions around Mahoya began to now extend to Qatar. And I wonder if the worship of Mykar at his altar on the high place had brought this about. And because Mykar lived in the high places of the earth, he was secluded and found contentment. But the people who lived in the valley were sometimes in distress and were obliged to retreat from strangers. In any place where those strangers lived was called Tawa by the people of Azan and Mykar. But the northernmost, far distance, great valley was named Helia by the people of Qatar. And it was named this because it was far distant and removed from the loving kindness of Anarchus. And it came to pass that the righteous began to be thought of as fearsome by those of Tawa, because they could not comprehend the ways of holiness and humility. And the Qataris were never known to act in rudeness before the Great One of Heaven. And thus the Lord began to answer me about how there could be a righteous people here in Tawa. And my eyes beheld the foundation laid by Moza to preserve the purposes of his father in creation at the time when the people would return to Eden. And it can now be readily seen that Mozart the decadent was also making his plans. And you will see that the foundations of the evil of nations are being set in place. And all of this was a marvelous thing for me to learn. And it came to pass that the Lord continued to open my eyes with Urim, and I saw that he was preparing a people who would follow the way of his heart in the temporal world for untold generations, and they would be a people of his choosing in special ways, intended to bring endurance to all things good in a world where the righteous and the wicked would be intermingled during all the course of the earth, and they would be a people suited to bring assistance to him in his task, to preserve the world for his father, Anarchist. And I saw that the foundations laid by them would continue in succeeding generations to uphold and sustain the purpose of his father in creation after the flood took place, which our mother Hava prophesied at the birth of Enoch. And it came to pass that I saw Micar was a visionary man and a prophet, for he loved the Lord, and he saw visions with clarity. And he had this gift because he was joined in his spirit to the vision of his mother. And when Micar left to go to Qatar, he thought he would find Eden. And to a large measure, he did. But when evil began to encroach upon the people there, his yearnings increased. And it was interesting to me that throughout this account, Micar is the first person perceived of as a prophet. And as I thought about these things, I understood that in the ancient mind, a seer and a prophet were two altogether different callings. For a seer saw all he did in the privacy of his own life that pierced time and place. But to bring understanding, a prophet spoke things that had an immediate effect upon those in the present moment, which dwelt with that which was unknown when it was spoken, except by inspiration with the expectation of greatly influencing important life decisions. And it came to pass that in his concern, he went to his rock where he prayed. And by the example of Emory, Micah was determined to find answers from Mosa the Lamb so he could bring to his people understanding. And his intention was to build a defense between evil and his people because they had to hide themselves more and more from the wicked of Tawa. And it came to pass that after much earnest prayer, the Lord spoke to him with his guiding spirit. And he said, Micar, my son, in the land of Moladeth, there is a man named Canaan, and his wife is called Shamar, and she shall bear a son, and he shall be named Mahal. And he shall be the one that will bring to Qatar the great establishment of sevening that the mother of all the living established at the altar of Yadzikai. And even as I am a fountain of forgiveness and a river of purity and a clear spring of living water welled up and spilling over, even so shall I flow in the land of Qatar to follow with all my loved ones here. And the one named Mahal shall influence the righteous to love me with a deep and profound personal love, and I will go out with them. 
and my presence will accompany them and I will establish for a long standing foundation among them the love of repentance, the joys of forgiveness, and the peace that comes from knowing the truth and loving kindness. And you will see that the sevening of Hava will become expanded because of this love for me to engulf all creation in the 11th generation in order to safeguard all the purposes of anarchist in creation by one who will be called Melchizedek. And your people must come to know me and turn in all their doings toward me and come to view all that I mean to them. And I say to you that the one named Mahal, who Shamar shall bear, will be an instrument in my hand to accomplish it. And it is important that my little son Mahal should be raised up to me here in Qatar. So send word to them by a messenger and bid them come to Qatar with their little son. Now the name Shamar means one who is diligent in all her decisions and careful in her duties. And she is a special handmaid to me and one who can join the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers. And Canaan, her husband, is very gracious and he is resilient in the face of turmoil and discord. And he is very skilled at loving in spite of sin. And those who stumble find in him solace as he is tolerant and understanding. And because of this, he is often sought out by those who need comforted. And it came to pass that sometime after this in the land of Nod, Shamar gave birth to a little son. And on the day when the child was to be named, word came that there was a messenger from the west who had come and he now waited at the place of water and the people sent one out to greet him and inquire as to his desires and after he was fed and rested he came near to the dwelling of Canaan and Shamar where there was a body of people assembled and he said that he was sent from my car and immediately they sent word from Yatsikat and Hava to come and after a while their old parents came into their midst and the messenger was warmly received, and the man held his peace until they had arrived, and he was greatly moved to look upon the first parents of all men. And the Spirit of the Lord swept over him, and he sang a song that Yatsikad said was heard in Eden, and his news was eagerly received by our old parents as they delighted to hear word of their children. And the messenger was a listener, and he reported some of the words the Lord had said to Micah, and he told them the name of the new son that the Lord had said to Micah. And he said the name of the child was Mahal, and in the course of time he would come to be called Mahal Afek, which is said to say Mahal the mighty, both in word and in loving kindness. And then the messenger withheld speaking and waited for the passing of a few days and then he quietly came and sat by the dwelling of Shamar. And after a while, he was asked to speak again. And they brought the mantle of Canaan to put over him, and they asked him to speak. And he told the rest of the message from my car. And he told Canaan and Shamar what the Lord had said regarding the desires of the Lord for the child to be brought to Qatar, to be raised up there for a special purpose for the Lord, which had to do with the living water of Moats of the Lamb, entering strongly into the regions of Qatar, and that he would be the father of generations of the righteous. And he said that his grandfather, Micah, was much moved upon with the prospect of it. And Canaan and Shamar listened intently. And when they inquired as to when the messenger received his message and the name from Micah and set out, and they found it had taken him four months to complete his journey, and word was spread concerning this, and all the people were amazed that the messenger had set out so many days before in his travels, and yet he arrived on the very day the child was to be named with the name for it. And when he had first arrived, he was taken into the assembly that had gathered to name the child, and his grandmother Azura was set to name him Afek. So the child was born with two names, and the name Mahal means one who has the authority to separate chaos out from the midst of the people. Now it came to pass that Shamar asked the messenger many questions, and he told her clearly the living conditions in Qatar, the pleasantness and abundance of the land, and also concerning those who inhabited Tawa surrounding them. And he disclosed to them concerning the two white stones used by Micah, and this was news to them all. 
and the messenger was obliged to stay in the encampment over the winter season. And Canaan and Shema sought the Lord with all diligence during that time. And it came to pass that in the spring, the Lord appeared to Shamar and her husband in the night when all were asleep around them. And he comforted them that he would go with them into the new land. And he opened up the eyes of Shamar to see the vision of created purpose of her little son, Mahal. And she gazed upon a very pure and sweet fountain of water and a multitude of people and water reeds moving with rejoicing. And the Lord said to her, that blessings without number would come to the people of Anarchist during all the course of man from their family being willing to sojourn in Qatar. And it came to pass that in the spring the child was able to travel, and they prepared to set out for the land of Qatar. And Yatakat took up little Mahal into his arms, and he said prayers of blessing over him. And he praised Mota the Lamb that the fillings of Eden were to come to the land of the setting sun. And he said that the gateway to heaven could be heard singing, and they departed being led by the messenger, and they had to be discreet, because the eastern border of the Shaman Sea was inhabited by those of Tawa. And it came to pass that they arrived safely to the south, rolling hills of the Shaman Sea. And the messenger went on ahead to announce their arrival, and when he returned, he led them to the settlements by the river. And Micah came down from his dwelling in the high places to greet them. And the meeting was sweet indeed, for the spirit of the Lord attended them in full measure. And Micah took up little Mahal into his arms, and he bestowed upon him rich blessings. And after it was determined where Canaan and Shamar would dwell, Micah returned to his dwelling place. And Azan dwelt among the people there in peace and comfort in all of his longings. This concludes the Book of Remembrance of Our Ancient Grandmothers, Chapter 2, Shalom.